Super Mario Sunshine is one of the most popular and most exciting speedruns in the entire world. Not only does it contain fun, but also fast-paced 3D platforming elements. The combination of this with Flood turns this game into one of the most fun speedruns to play and to watch. And with our new series Speedruns Explained, we aim to show you a big variety of speedruns and try to show and roughly explain the most fun and exciting parts. Super Mario Sunshine starts off with the cutscene of Mario landing on Delfino Island, finding Flood and a series of cutscenes which can't be skipped. After these rather long series of cutscenes, a fight and another cutscene, we finally get to our sort of first objective, chasing Shadow Mario. This is important as Super Mario Sunshine can only be completed if the player has defeated all Shadow Marios in all the levels. After we knock down Shadow Mario, Bianco Hills opens. We skip the first episode of the level altogether and head for shine number two right away by doing a series of wall jumps on the windmill to get onto the roof of the level and face Petey Piranha. From here on, we complete Bianco Hills almost in a fast-paced casual manner up until Shadow Mario. Next up, we leave the level and head to Gelato Beach. This is one of the shortest levels in the run, as the runner can almost skip to the Shadow Mario shine right away. As he enters the level, he grabs a coconut and drags it all the way to the beach house in the water where there's a shine which is protected by a barrier, which is originally meant to open after collecting seven other shines in advance. However, by bringing a coconut, positioning it in the right spot, jumping on the roof with the coconut, drop it down and have it roll towards you, it is possible to clip into the roof, which then allows the runner to collect the shine way in advance. As this is shine number eight in Gelato Beach, we can now select episode seven for the Shadow Mario shine and get that one by chasing him down rather quickly instead of having to do all the other episodes first. After that rather short trip to Gelato Beach, we're going to head for Pianta Village. The first two episodes will be completed in a fast paced, but pretty much in the intended manner. Episode 3, however, starts with Shadow Mario stealing Flood and keeping him on a mushroom in the now with lava goop flooded area in which the player has to now find a way to get to Flood without touching the goop. In the speedrun, however, the runner abuses damage invincibility to take a huge shortcut. Close to Flood awaits shine number 3 of Pianta Village. Episode 4 is once again solved in the normal way, by leading the burning chain jump into the water pit, which then rewards us with a shine. In episode 5, however, you are meant to find Yoshi and ride down to this fungi in order to get rid of the butter fat on the fungi, blocking the entrance to the secret shrine. However, if you know how to do it, you can clip into the fungi without Yoshi and trigger the loading zone before the butter fat hits you. This gives us entry to the secret shrine, and by getting through the level, we are once again given a shine at the end of the stage. In Pianta Village Episode 6, the player is meant to clean 10 Piantas within 3 minutes. While this seems like a rather hard task when first played, this is also a hard part to optimize in the run, as there are hidden Piantas in the ground. While this is no technical problem, it can be hard to aim those precise shots at those almost seemingly arbitrary spots on the ground. You think doing it within 3 minutes is hard? Well, with some practice, this can be completed in less than 1 minute. And after this level Shadow Mario chase, we're going to head for Pina Park. Up to the third shine, this course is done in a fast, but overall the intended manner. First the coaster ride and defeating the Bowser machine, followed by entering the cannon and completing the secret shine course. Back in the actual park, it's time to collect red coins. And doing these fast requires a couple of precise jumps and a good feeling of how much Flood's hover ability can take. Episode 4 is once again a rather fast shine, but is performed as intended. You have to bring back energy to the sunflowers of Pinna Park. Now let's select Pinna Park Episode 2, which once again spawns the bullet bills that can chase after you. However, this time we're gonna get Yoshi to use his different abilities. First of all, we're gonna use the purple Yoshi by eating a durian fruit and bring a papaya to the Pinna Park entrance itself. By positioning the papaya in a certain position, we can jump over it with Yoshi and land in a specific spot, which will then clip us into the actual park with Yoshi. Now by positioning ourselves close to the stairs, we can get stuck in an invisible wall, which is in the park itself, as this area wasn't meant to be entered at this point of the game. 
Getting stuck there, however, allows the bullet builds to make it over the wall. We will then use a purple bullet bill to turn it into a platform, which will carry us to the Yoshi go around. However, we need Yoshi to eat the papaya first in order to even enter the secret. Luckily, due to this being an unintended position for the player to be at, Yoshi can just eat the papaya through the door and turn orange. The platform is needed, as the area past the stairs has no ground collision anymore. Only the go-around itself has a collision again, as it is an actor and not actually part of the level. So we can step on it and enter the secret, which allows us to skip Pinna Park Episode 5 entirely. Now for Rico Harbor Episode 3. A shine hidden in a cage that is only accessible from the bottom. While originally planned out as a parkour using cranes, you can also do a variety of spin jumps and reach this shine rather quickly. I doubt this was originally planned like that. Episode 4 of this level is a secret shine and is a make or break one. Just looking at it makes you wonder how this even works as a lot of the slopes and the platforms turn so steep that Mario defies all laws of physics in order to make it. Learning this and pulling it off probably requires a ton of work and practice, but it pays off. The rest of Rico Harbor is pretty much done the intended way up to Shadow Mario. So let us quickly move on to Serena Beach. Arriving at Serena Beach, we see that the entire hotel is gone and the area covered in electrical goop. But if that wasn't enough, an electrical manta ray appears, leaving a trail of even more electrical goop behind. Using all sorts of spray techniques, mostly spam spray, which sprays little drips of water into all possible directions, gets rid of the manta and its little submantas that appear as it splits when taking damage rather quickly. After bringing the hotel back up, we can complete almost all the upcoming shines the intended way. Even Serena Beach Episode 6. However, here is another time limit. Another 3 minutes to clean up all the goop. But using spam spray once again, it doesn't take that long to even get rid of all of it. Now to Noki Bay. In episode 2, you need to kill King Calamari for the shine originally, for which you need to head for the ruins, go into a maze and complete it within 30 seconds, as it forms back into rock only. After the maze, you get attacked by several bloopers, which you are meant to defeat in order to get to the second maze. At the top, King Calamari will wait for you. Or not, because you can just enter the level, do a couple of wall jumps, grab this little spring here which gets bigger as you put it down, and placing it in the corner here will make it large and by positioning yourself in the right spot it will push you through the wall and you'll just clip into the shine location. No key 4. This shine is mostly done the intended way. You go down to the big fish, who didn't put a lot of effort into keeping his teeth nice. And it's your task now to clean the teeth. While this sounds pretty normal so far, you have a lot of margin for arrow when trying to leave his mouth as the fish is closing it. Also, if you manage to take damage as you are finishing cleaning the last tooth, either through normal goop damage or air damage, you can skip the shine spawning cutscene and get to the shine as it spawns rather than having to wait for it to appear and only then being able to get there. Now on to the final part of the game, Corona Mountain. This part is mostly done in the intended manner. The only difference is that you try to do it as fast as you can, so a lot of jumps, spins and more. Besides that, nothing very special. No glitches or skips at least. Now the Bowser fight, the final part of the game. Here you need to use the rocket nozzle to break the 5 sections of the tub by ground pounding them. This is also done in the intended way. However, to speed things up, you can charge your rocket nozzle while going down in the ground pound. This way you get up way faster and get to the other section. This makes it go really fast. And as soon as that fight's done, we've reached the end of the run, taking a total of 1 hour, 20 minutes and 56 seconds. 360 Chrism's personal best at this point in time. And I have to say, that's extremely fast. Be sure to check out his stream, the link to it is on the screen right now and down below in the description. Without him, this video wouldn't even be possible. Thanks for watching everybody, I hope you enjoyed. If you want to watch more videos, click the annotations on the screen right now and be sure to subscribe and tell us in the comments down below what you want to see in the next speedruns explained. Maybe we can find a runner for it. 